stars of animation are shining. It's time to stay tuned. And now, here's your host, Phil Mackey. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another new episode of Stay Tuned Live, the animation-themed podcast that happens every week here on Streaming the Magic, and I am your host, as always, Phil Maki, a uh, animator and podcaster and former Disney cast member, here to be your guide. Well, first of all, <laughs> a little reminder before we kick things off tonight, um, next week... If you, if you were keeping score at home or if you weren't keeping score at home, next week is the season finale of Stay Tuned Live, season one of this new version of my podcast. Can you believe it's already been a whole season? I, I'm so uh, flummoxed by this. Uh, tonight is episode number 13, and uh, next week is going to be the season one finale, which is really exciting. So now more than ever, everybody, uh, your support matters. So hit that like button right now, share this episode with friends immediately. And I, I can't say too much right now, but let me tell you that there are some big things on the horizon for Stay Tuned Live. And uh, the right people are paying attention as we speak. So you'd be surprised how far your support goes. Uh, once again, thank you for that. Also, on a semi-related note, uh, you guys are invited tomorrow night for a different live stream show that I do, and it happens on the Stay Tuned page here on Facebook. So uh, the best way to get notified about that is to go to facebook.com forward slash stay tuned show. Go ahead and like and follow that. And tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, I want you to join me for what I call an artist conversation. Uh, it is hosted by me and my friend Mario Mora. We are both uh, artists who host a show about artists. And um, we're going to be talking about what it's like to be a professional artist, what it takes to pursue that kind of lifestyle. Our guest tomorrow night is going to be Marvel Comics historian Kevin Garcia. So tune in tomorrow night and uh, you can watch for free on here on Facebook. So that's that's all the news I have at the upfront of the show. Okay, tonight's guest talks for a living, which is a subject near and dear to my heart. In fact, there's a good chance you've heard him and didn't even realize it. If you've seen a Skittles commercial in modern times or grew up with a classic uh, Count Chocula or Cocoa Puffs commercial, then you know his voice. But to a generation of cereal-eating, cartoon-watching kiddos like myself, he was also lion -o, Lord of the Thundercats. Please welcome actor Larry Kenny. Hey, hey how are you, Mark? Mark! <laughs> I'm sorry, Phil. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Like, talk, that, about, talk about outtakes. That's the way I start every every show, you know. That's my running joke. You must know it's always Mark. Mark. It's always Mark, yeah. It's always hey, Mark. How are you doing, I'm, Phil? I'm great. How are you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> that, was, that was very entertaining. Uh, well, welcome. I'm really glad to have you here on, on Stay Tuned Live. It's great. It's good to be here. I, I'm, I'm really happy to see you. Thank you. It's very timely because, as, as you already are aware, Hulu has uh, started airing yeah. the uh, classic and the 2011 Thundercats episodes. That's right. Yeah. Just this week, I think. Yeah. It's, it's really exciting for me because... Um, you know, th those of us that remember, uh, TV at one point was very episodical, and you couldn't sit down and just watch as many as you wanted all at once. That's right. That's it right. It takes it out of context. It makes it hard to follow, I think, when you watch it one week after one week, you know? It, it yeah. messes with yeah. your memory, but now you can just watch them all. <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I remember when, when, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, when my kids were young, and uh, we got started getting... Uh, VHS tapes for them to watch, you know. Yeah. And we bought them. We bought them um, the Wizard of Oz. Now, when I was a kid, and we're talking 110 years ago, the Wizard of Oz right. was on television once a year, once a year, and NBC would promote it for a month, you know. And you would make sure you were home that was a Sunday night, I think, usually, and uh, and then you got to see the Wizard of Oz. 
So we bought these tapes and this tape for my, my kids. And I came home from work one day and they're watching. I said, oh, you're watching The Wizard of Oz. Great. And my son picked up the controller and he stopped it. He said, he said yeah, we're going to pause it and watch the rest of it later. I said, no, you can't do that. You can't, you can't rewind it or fast forward it. You have to watch it from the beginning. But it's a whole other world. It is. It, it, uh, we used to be sort of slaves to the time slot. And mm. uh, uh, now now we're like, no, you, you're you going to wait for me. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's right. So, um, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk about starting out here uh, is that you have a background in radio, right? Mm -hmm. Which I, I love because uh, mm -hmm. I've got a real big love for radio as well. Uh, and I feel like your voice has that classic radio um, spirit. What what uh, what can you tell us about your radio experiences? Well, my, my very first job in the business was in radio. I was 15 years old. <clears throat> Pardon me, speaking of my wonderful voice, it's not so hot uh, tonight. <laughs> um, something in the air, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I was, in, uh, I was about to begin my junior year in high school and I got a job at this local radio station. And uh, I, I worked there throughout the rest of school, you know, and, and then I went off to college and worked at a station there. But I stayed in radio until, in one way or another, until 2013, so 50-some years. Wow. Uh, the last 34 of which I was, uh, 35 years, I was with Imus in the Morning. It's a radio uh, and television syndicated, syndicated show. But, yeah, I, start, I started in radio, and it was a great way to start, especially for what later happened with uh, commercials and uh, and video games and of course uh, animated series um absolutely yeah it was good practice for that yeah so what's speaking of animated series what's one thing that um you learned about the animation industry uh, that that came uh, as a result of the roles you played something that i learned about it from the, yeah. from the role you played yeah, well, like that you wouldn't have known that if you hadn't gone into that industry something you wouldn't have known about animation otherwise Oh gosh! Well, here's the problem with answering that. Okay. <clears throat> before I, before I did any any animated series, the first one was Thundercats. Yeah, uh, and then we did Silverhawks and Tiger Sharks and a whole bunch of holiday specials for Rankin Bass and things like that. Sure. Uh, but before I did any of that, I was doing commercials for a long time, uh, and my first animated voice was uh, Sonny the Cocoa Puffs bird. Yes. Uh, for those of you who remember it or don't remember it, how can I won't go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? Yahoo! I'm Google for Google Bus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember that very fondly. I did that That's kind of hard voice to maintain too. I imagine. Not really. It, not it really. seems like it is, but not not really. Um, some other voices, for me at least, the hardest ones to do are the really low, gravelly ones where you have to yell. For example, the Skittles commercials. I've been doing Skittles commercials for about twenty years. I'm the guy sure. at the end of the one that says, uh, "Feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow." I love those ads so much. But if you do that voice all day long, you know, that's it kind of messes up your voice. But yes. Oh, here's a here's a little visual for fun commercial stuff. That's Frank and Barry. That was Bob McFadden, by the way, doing those voices, that voice, which uh, who was um, a Snarf on Thundercats. Yes. Uh, and, then, <clears throat> and then, of course, we had the um, we had Count Chocula at, right at the end there. And, yeah. and you, were, you were Count Chocula as well, correct? For thirty nine years, yeah. Thirty nine years. You're, you're still you're still Count Chocula, right? Count Chocula, cereal coming your way. How about the monster for breakfast today? I love it. How how uh, does that how does auditioning for a role like that even come about for a commercial for cereal? Well, uh, like everything else in in our business, you audition for it. <clears throat> um, I have an agent in New York. I, I'm, I work in New York and. Uh, my agent will call me one day, let's see, he'll call me on a Friday and he'll say, uh, Monday at two o'clock, for example, you'll be going to this particular studio and you'll be auditioning for, in, in this case, Thundercats. He said, a new animated series that Rankin Bass is gonna do called Thundercats. And um, that's all we know about it. So go there tomorrow at two or Monday at two. And then you show up and they, they give you, um, well, first of all, the walls are covered with, um, with illustrations you know, draw, sell drawings of the characters. Right. And uh, they give you a, a couple pages of synopsis of what the show is about, what each character is about, and ask you to pick two of them. At least that's what they ask me. Pick, pick one mutant and one Thundercat. And uh, the mutants were Mumra's guys. You remember them? So yeah. I, I auditioned for uh, Lion-O and Jackal-Man. 
and those are the two main characters that I did for 130 episodes. That's a lot of episodes, absolutely. So, so you, you auditioned for those, and uh, the voice of Lino, it, it's got a similar register to your own, I would say. <clears throat> That's sort of how that came about. It uh, just sort of fell, fell into your own uh, sound already, or, or, or did they want you to do something a little bit different? Well, the, what they wanted for the for the Thundercats themselves, Lionel, Panthro, Tyra, Chitara, <clears throat> I'm leaving some people out, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> they wanted the, the Thundercats themselves, there they are, uh, to sound very human, not sound like, quote, cartoon characters. They wanted right. to sound people. So right. I used, of course, my own voice, uh, my voice on, on Thundercats, there he is as a young boy. That was the hardest one to do because I had to sound like I was like seven I don't know, gee, Tiger. I don't know if, if I can handle this job, you know. And besides, that sword's heavy. It's <laughs> <You know? laughs> perfect. Uh, but that, that's that's how it comes about. You audition for things, and you leave. And if if you get a call a couple of days later saying you got the job, hooray! But if not, you just never never hear from them again, <laughs> and they hire somebody else. Do you remember the first time that you saw the combination of your voice and the animation together? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Well, what was that? What was that like? What was that situation feeling like? Well, once again, once again, I had I, I had had that experience for years with with the Cocoa Puffs and the Count Chocula commercials, sure. you know, recording it and then seeing it uh, put put together. But for on, on Thundercats, it was a lot different. It, it was a, <clears throat> a lot different. It was a, a show, you know, an entire 130 episodes. Well, we, we didn't know at first how many we would do. We did 13 episodes at first. Uh, they sold those to ABC. And then uh, this is what usually happens with television shows. You do 13 episodes, and um, if they buy them, then they'll run those. And about halfway through that, they watch the, the ratings. And if they decide that it's going to be a hit show, then they'll buy another 13. Or if it's really going to be a big show, they'll buy another 100 or something like that. And that's what happened. And that magic number you want to get is 65, I, I understand it, because that's when you can hit syndication, correct? 65 is the least you can have to syndicate, yeah. We, and we did twice that many. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, your work as Lionel, you know, um, one of the things I thought was interesting about it was that we've got this character that is a essentially a 12 year old who is uh, really quickly forcibly <clears throat> put into an adult body. And as far as uh, acting yeah. is concerned, how did that knowledge, how did that inform your uh, performance? Well, good question. Um, as you saw, and if you might remember, <clears throat> the first couple of episodes, I was the, the young boy still. Yes. And then gradually uh, got older and older. Um, the only thing I had to kind of remember, I guess, uh, keep in my mind as I was doing the, the voice and the, the lines, was um, that he is mentally still pretty much a young boy. He's right. got the muscles, he's, got the, he's pumped up, you know, but he's... He's still basically trying to find his way. And here he finds himself as the lord of this group of superheroes right. at such a young age. And so I kept trying to imagine what a kid would, you know, who had all this power and, and all this pressure on him to perform well, uh, how that would how that would play out. And so I, con I constantly remember he's not completely sure of this. He's not totally confident. He, in the back of his mind, there's always a little doubt, even though he's, you know, winning these battles and things. That's that's the main thing I kept in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see that with, there's times where Jago will come back as a ghost and will say something like along the lines that really puts him in his place. And he has to sort of react to that and go, you know what? You're right. I totally overstepped. And yeah. I think one of the things yeah. I love about the show is there's morals, but it's not necessarily uh, hitting you over the head with it. It's sort of woven into the fabric of the story. Not preachy. Yeah. Yeah. Not I like preachy, that. I love yeah, it too. That's a hard. <clears throat> that's a hard mm -hmm. um, it is. So I, one of the things I think is also really interesting about the, the show was that you and the other actors, a lot of you guys pulled multiple duty. You had to pull in uh, a variety of roles, but you're in the same series how do you go about finding ways to make sure make yourself not sound too much like yourself when you do all these different roles? Yeah, that was one of the challenges. There were six of it, five of us in the cast originally, um, and then we added another Jerry Ann Raphael. So there were six people who did every voice you hear on Thundercats on all 130 episodes. So right. 
I never did count them. I don't think anybody did. Uh, but in those 130 episodes, I would estimate conservatively that each of us did 40 different voices, maybe 50 different voices. Sometimes I mean, I it was just a couple show like that other than other than maybe the simpsons i can't think of any other show that does that that's true yeah um now some of the characters some of the lines may have been a guy had two lines in the whole episode you know and you never right. saw him again. but uh back to your question one of the hardest things was as you got further and further into the show maybe you're 50 75 episodes in and you've got to come up with a new character the writers have written in a new character, a, a, a Rober Burble or, you know, one of those, maybe a new right. mutant or something. So as you kind of hinted at, the problem then becomes, how do you create an entirely new voice that doesn't sound too much like the characters you've done already? Sure. So that, that took a little work, you know. Sometimes you'd get the script a couple of days earlier and think, how am I going to... You'd try it and you'd think, no, that, that sounds too much like Jackal Man change it a little bit more than that, you know, make it sound like a Rotaro or something like that. Right. So that was, that was one of the, uh, the challenges. And then another thing is uh, sometimes let's say you would do a voice in episode 25 of a minor character, but then in episode 40, that character comes back in for a visit. And then you have to kind of remember, how did I do this? So they would play it back for you, you know, I, I like that you brought that up because that's that's one of the things that strikes me uh, as as best as I can recall. There wasn't too much in the way of continuity for other cartoons of that era. It was very episodic, but but at least for a while in Thundercats, there's a there's a a, a good uh, thread of continuity from episode to episode where you where you can learn like okay, this is the episode where they have to go and do build a base, and then this is the one where they have, which is really I mean. For its time, very different, I would say. I think so too. I, I must admit, I was not <clears throat> before we started recording these things. I was not watching a lot of daytime animated television. You know, I was in my thirties by that time. Right, um, that would be ridiculous to have a, a, an adult male in their thirties to watch co cartoons uh, uh, by them by themselves at that age. That would be really weird and out of place. And uh, yeah, <laughs> back then it was. Or at least I, know. At least I, I think it was. <laughs> probably not. You know what? Probably. You know, uh, we're nerds, we're geeks, and and there've always been nerds and geeks. You know, yes, yes, in some fashion or another. So I'm sure there were, you know, 30 year old men. I know I was watching them when I was up till I was about 20 or 25. I think that's about when I stopped. Had to, had right, to go right. yeah, <laughs> I had to go to work. That's very, that's very true. Um, what was I? I was gonna. Uh, oh, I was gonna ask you, like, you know, so. So what's interesting is sh the show happens for, for three years, three or four years roughly, and then and then it goes away. And then it comes back in 2011 yeah. on Cartoon Network, and they invited you to come back, right? Yeah, they did. In fact, uh, uh, Warner Brothers bought the rights to the show and to all the Rankin-Bass properties. <clears throat> and they, yes, they did a reboot in 2011, which I still think is every bit as good as the original. I, I agree. Yes. Yeah, good. Most people do, I think. And most yeah. people like me, I think, were just really distraught when they, they canceled that series because it was yeah. doing it was doing very well uh, in the ratings on Cartoon Network. Uh, at least the inside people in the industry that I know tell me that, no, the ratings were very good, but the toy sales were not that great. So I've heard two things. I've heard the toy sales weren't good, but I also heard it was just an expensive show to animate. That's the other thing I heard. Really, it may have been. I, of course, I had yeah. nothing to do with the animation. Uh, yeah, that's, it was done in Japan. It was right, and, and it's interesting mm -hmm. because at that point, at least when the original show came out, anime wasn't really uh, the, the popular thing that it is now here in America. Yeah, uh, it's. It, I have to wonder if maybe Thundercats was one of the shows to usher in, you know, anime. I think it was, and I think that's maybe part of the problem with it. It was too new for some people, especially people who were fans of the original show. <clears throat> and I think they were thinking, oh, Thundercats is coming back and it's going to look just like the original one. It's going to sound just like the original one, you know. But when people tell people would say to me, why did they do that and change? I would tell them, and I still tell them, even with this new one, Thundercats Roar, there right. are a lot of people who don't like that. And, and I can understand that. But it's for a whole new audience. You have to remember, it's for an entire new audience. And for one thing, it, it, it keeps the it keeps the um, 
the product, what do you call it? The uh, uh, intellectual property. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Intellectual property uh, going. It keeps the legend going. Um, and well, and another thing, you'll always have the original Thundercats and the 2011 version. Sure. Uh, on, now on DVD, you know, yeah. Yeah. you can watch any time you want. If you don't have the DVDs, you can go on YouTube and watch every episode if you want to. So they'll sure. always be there. They'll always be there. And you can show your kids those. And then they might like that better. They might like the 2011 one better. And the really small ones might like, I think, the, the new one, Thundercats Roar. It's really made for, for much younger kids, you know, four or sure. five year old kids. Well, that's a really good, that's a healthy attitude to look at on it because I, I think it can be um, tempting to sort of jump into that expression of, oh, they're ruining my childhood, sort of thing, you know, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But but you're right. It's um, mm -hmm. one one new version appearing does not cancel out the other one. And I, I like to think of it kind of like Batman, uh, just mm -hmm. as a just Batman as a as a concept, because you know, for some people, the Adam West show is their, that's their Batman. And for other people, it's the animated series from the 90s, you know? Sure. Yeah. James uh, Bond. Thing. Oh, James the Bond. James Another really good one. Right. Sure. People get this fights over, you know, some people, old guys like me say, Sean Connery is James Bond. <laughs> nobody, nobody else. Sean Connery is James Bond. Right. But for, new, for, for some newer folks to the series, maybe it's Craig, you know? That's right. I like um, him too. No, yeah, it's a harder one to do. So, so uh, yeah, you mentioned Thundercats Roar, which is that's the newest incarnation, uh, and it probably I would say it's more for those who don't know the show. It's kind of more like uh, Teen Titans Go. Looks just say. like yeah. looks like, yeah like that. Um, but now, so that now we've got these three iterations of Thundercats. Uh, there was a a movie that was going to be in theaters, but it ended up being aired as a television special in five parts. And to my understanding, that was a five part thing that they did back in, that you did, that you recorded. Oh, really? <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I, I yeah. don't remember everything anymore, you know. Oh, it's okay. Uh, but, I don't but, recall that. I really yeah, don't. Uh, supposedly it was, uh, it was, uh, I have to look it up, but I think it was, the, it was what they used to kick off the second season. There's like a five part, like Mumra thing and the idea. Oh, yeah. You're talking about when the original series was still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It, you're right. They were going to do a movie, but they decided to take at least two episodes. They made a they made a two-hour movie, didn't they? Something like that, which would be like four or five episodes. Yeah, yeah. And they broke it up into episodes now that you can just watch it in episodes, but it was going to be a film, and then I guess they 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 pulled it because other other similar franchises weren't doing as well in the theater. Uh, like GoBots had a movie and My Little Pony had a movie and just, they were, maybe they panicked. Well it could very well be. I, of course, as, as an actor, I don't, I didn't have any participation in the administrative sure. part, you know, the, the, the sure. business part. But, but I guess where I was going with that was that's, that's a, that's decent, a, a number, that's a decent number of outings for any series. Yeah. So I'm, I'm inclined to think maybe it's, it's something more than just nostalgia uh, that keeps the, the franchise going. Would you Would you agree? I think it has to be more than just nostalgia, because yeah. if it weren't, if it were just nostalgia, the only people who would watch it were those of us who grew up with it, right? Uh, you know, and, and I don't think there would have been this 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 acceptance of the new one, the 2011 one that came out, sure. as much as there was. So there, you know, there are, there are so many factors in the, in this business. When we yeah. first started. People ask me a lot of times, did you know right away you had a big hit series? Well, you never know that, whether it's a movie, mm -hmm. uh, a television series, or a, an animated series. We knew from the beginning, when I say we, we the rest of the actors and I, and the, the people on the other side of the glass, you know, the producers, the directors, engineers, and all that, we could tell right away when we first started reading the scripts. First of all, when we started reading the scripts, uh, which we got one at a time, of course, we thought, hey, this, is, this is a pretty cool story. You know, this is going to be a, a cool story. And then uh, and then we started recording it, and, and all of us looked at each other and thought, we're good. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you worked with, I worked with some of the best actors in the world on that series. Yeah. So and, did, you, did you hit the ground running with, with that? Or did how long do you think it took for you before you felt like you had the character figured out? 
a good question. I, I think almost immediately. Um, well, I shouldn't say immediately. Probably after the first, let's say we recorded three episodes, maybe. That's when you kind of, I, I kind of settled in. And I didn't have to go up to the mic and tell myself, okay, here's what he sounds like. Okay, right. here's how he would. You kind of, once you live with the character long enough, you you know, he becomes part of your, your thinking. And um, so it didn't take very long at all. I'll tell you when I knew personally that it was a big hit. It was two weeks before Christmas in, I guess, 86. The show had been on the air about a year, I think. Two weeks before Christmas, and I was at uh, Toys R Us. May they rest in peace. Yes. And oh, my gosh. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was Christmas shopping. And the last time I had been there, because I had two small kids at the time, and the last time I had been there, uh, it was all all the uh, one big section of, of I think Ninja Turtles, one of He Man. I, I forget the actual chronology of what was on when, but sure. this time I walked in and there are three aisles of nothing but Thundercats. I mean, on both sides, nothing but Thundercats. And I thought, oh wow, this show must be a big. They're selling lots of toys, you know. And a cute story I love to tell the same day. <clears throat> I saw these two young boys, maybe seven, eight, nine years old. And they were looking at the action figures. And as I walked by, I heard one of them say, I'm going to get Panthro. He's the coolest one. I kind of chuckled. And the other one says, uh, no, I'm getting Tigra. He's, you know, Tigra's. A well, I couldn't help myself. I stood behind him. I said, you know, guys, you should get uh, Lionel. He's the guy who says, Thundercats, ho! And he looked at me like I was nuts. <laughs> As I walk away, I thought this guy an idiot. do an impression of, of, of Lionel. <laughs> As I walked away, I heard one of them say the other one, he didn't even sound like Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, you know, you're a little, if you only knew. <laughs> right. Uh, it you was may, funny. That's good. Did you ever, did, did they ever, um, I don't know. Did they was res- a perk of being an actor? Did they send you any toys for free just because you were Lionel? Or <clears throat> no, no. It's another thing people ask me a lot. Is I bet you have lots of the action figures. You know, I yeah. think I have. I have one right back here somewhere, uh, and I have a bunch of the older, small ones, the original ones. You know, but they're all sure. dirty. The, my kids and grandkids have have played with them, uh, but who knew? You know, uh, I see on on the, or I hear about people going on on uh, eBay and places like that. And I see these characters selling for 500 bucks or something like that. Yeah. You know? The worst you- thing. No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You're fine. You're fine. Okay. Um, animation sells. The last two weeks we were recording Thundercats and then same thing happened with Silver Hawks and Tiger Sharks and comic strip. The, the company brought in boxes and boxes of animation cells and just left them on the floor. And they said, take whatever you want. We got to throw those things. They're, you know, they're no good for anything anymore. No. Yeah, yeah. So I think Lynn Lipton Chitara took maybe a half a box of them. And I thought, what is she going to do with those? And I took one or two. I think I still have one uh, uh, cell, animation cell of, uh, of Jackal Man. That's the only thing I have left. But again, you see, you see people selling those for thousands of dollars. On, who knew, right? That's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, but I mean, you know, you look at the process and, and it's not done the same way anymore. And right. so it's that it does make them like this special piece of artwork now. Uh, sure. Sure. Uh, so when you when you guys were recording and you mentioned you mentioned uh, Chitara, for example, uh, did My you were- by the way, as the original Thundercats. Oh, what's uh, that? I said Chitara, whom I referred to as the original Thundercats ho, but that's just... <laughs> uh, does, has she heard you say that? Oh, yeah, she doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I imagine that. Uh, so did you did you record in uh, together, like, uh, so you could speak opposite each other, like the old radio plays? We were always together. Uh, everybody, all, the entire cast in the studio, whenever we recorded, with the rare exception of um, maybe we have finished for one day and um, uh, they might say to me, Larry, we want to redo one line. Just There's no need for everybody to come in, you know. But when we were actually recording the thing, uh, we were always together, which unfortunately is not the way uh, it works anymore. Right. 
with commercials, uh, animated shows, whatever, you're in a booth by yourself. They, they like to put everybody alone, not even the same day. You know, you're there, you're there two hours on Thursday and the other guy comes in and I find it um, not nearly as much fun. And I don't, and I don't think the product, the quality is as good as it, as it is, was back then. Because when you're working with the other actors, you're looking at them, you're hearing them, you're interacting, you're getting the timing down. Your performance is much better. Yeah, I, I think. You know something before, I. Uh, before, sorry, uh, I, I to this day I don't know the reason why they do it that way now. Uh, yeah, again, yeah, I'm an actor. Again, I do what they tell me. I go in the booth and say my words. I talk for food, you know. So I'm not going to argue with them. Right. Uh, I imagine it's a, it's probably some kind of quality thing to isolate everybody, and I'm not sure exactly what the reason for that is. But I do think you're right. I think it, I think it loses something in. The reacting part of acting. Yes. Uh, so did you did you know that I don't know if anyone has told you that, that this company called Super Seven is making yes. uh, a, a newer wave of action? Or, well, they're not even really action figures. They're like forty five dollars a pop. Have you seen these things? Yeah, they're more, more it's more statuary, I think, than action figures. But they're gorgeous. Yeah, they're they are. Very, yeah, I've seen. I haven't seen the actual thing in person, if you will, but. I see them on the internet like everybody else, Facebook, you know. They look great. Huh? They look great. They do. If Super 7's watching, they got to send you one. They should send you an honorary lion -o. <laughs> I hope so. I hope they do. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's curious, the, st the style that that show established, um, because you said, you mentioned Silver Hawks and Tiger Sharks, but I, I feel like uh, maybe after those two shows, that sort of way of doing things kind of, faded out of popularity right because you don't really there wasn't a whole lot of other japanese animated uh, american series at that point after that that's true i hadn't thought about that <clears throat> and i don't again i don't know i'm sure there are there are many reasons for that too i'm sure there are yeah, many probably. things kind of fade in and out that, that come into play uh, sure. I, I don't when when you were recording with the other actors uh are there, is there any actor that you sort of maybe more than any other one developed a, a really excellent rhythm with? Well, we all were in such sync. I can't pick, I can't pick out one, but I will tell you this. And I think everybody in the cast loved working with uh, Earl Hammond who played Mumra. Sure. Because, <laughs> first of all, he was, a, he was a funny, funny guy to begin with. And, but when he would do Mumra, especially during the transformation, you know, uh, uh, ancient spirits of evil, transform this, you know. And if you, if you remember on the cartoon, Mumra would be, there would be spit coming out of his mouth and he would be drooling. Yeah. Well, yeah. Earl, did, Earl did that. He, <laughs> whenever we saw, uh, we look, we were recording, we always would look a page or two ahead. And I'd go, next page, Earl's going to do the thing. So we'd all start backing up a little bit. <laughs> By the time he got to the ever living, we'd all be back against the wall. One day we even brought a, I even brought a piece of plastic sheeting and we put it up. <laughs> <laughs> did, how did he appreciate that? I'm sure that, that's so well, it, it was hilarious, of course. We yeah. had the greatest time. Uh, those That cast of people... Uh, um, me and Peter Thomas, Peter Thomas, uh, Peter Newman, who played Tigra, Lynn Lipton, Chitara, uh, Earl Hammond, Mumra, Bob McFadden, Snarf, and Earl Hyman, who played um, Panthero. Uh, you might know him as uh, Bill Cosby's father on the, the Cosby Show. That was yeah, Earl. Yeah, yeah. But we all we all worked on not only Thundercats for a couple of years. But then on Silverhawks for over a year, and then Tiger Sharks for about three weeks, and then less very long. Yeah. Uh, and then we did, as I said earlier, um, mostly that same cast did three or four animated uh, holiday series, like A Star for Jeremy, um, The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus. My point being that for about five or six years, we were together a lot. Plus, Bob McFadden and I worked together for years and years on uh, the monster cereals, I was Count Chocula, and he was uh, Frankenberry. Frankenberry cereal with strawberry marshmallows. That was oh, I love that. What's What's funny about that is there's a lot of similarities actually with the with the monster cereals and with like Mum Ra. There's a lot of this 
universal monster feeling to mm -hmm. all of that. True. A lot of I hadn't thought about that. That's true. Yeah. People, you know, some people love that. People love monsters, especially love monsters. the ones that are selling sugar flavored cereal. That's right. <laughs> Who is the voice of Booberry? That was Peter Waldron. Booberry. Oh, okay. It sounded like Peter Lorre. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah Peter Lorre. The very, the very yeah. good Peter Lorre impression. Very good. Yeah. Very good. yeah. That was him. <laughs> and then there were a couple others. There was, there was, um, there was Mummy the Young. Fruit, you know? fruit, the fruit, fruit root. Yeah. Fruit root. Those kind of fell off uh, along the way. Do, do you, did you know who voiced those guys as well? Yes, but I can't remember their names. Yeah. Um, then there also were, you know, those cereals are General Mills cereals, but they had other yeah. cereals like uh, Lucky Charms and, uh, um, oh, guys. Other, I can't think of all the other ones now, but um, it's really been nostalgic for me right now. Sitting, sitting here, listening, uh, talking about these things. I hadn't thought about the this other oh, guy for a long time. We always, you can imagine, we had a great time recording these things. I mean, it's work. Yeah. You're working on it, but it was just so much fun. Well, so you know what's great about, about those commercials is uh, because they only had to be 30, 30 to forty five seconds. Mm -hmm. Uh, those companies could throw a lot of money at them, and they were animated beautifully, actually. You were. Yes. So, yeah. uh, it would, be, would have been kind of nice if they would have, I mean, this would have been really corporate, but if they would have gone off and made some kind of a little animated series with the monster serials characters. It would have been fun, yeah. It would have been fun. You know, um, pacing, you mentioned pacing earlier, which is I think is interesting, and something I've been noticing in, in re-watching Thundercats is everybody speaks... Uh, with a very deliberate, determined meter. Um, mm -hmm. Was that something that they asked you to do? I think more than anything else, that was the style back then. Okay. You look at the other shows too, the He-Man and yeah. Yeah. Ninja Turtles and stuff. Uh, today, even the cartoons are more natural. They're more the yeah. way people in real life. I mean, you watch Bob's Burgers and... They're not talking like us, you know. Of course, they're not superheroes either. But uh, I think like everything else in our world, things have come down off that stilted, formal uh, pedestal they were on. And we're, we're all more just kind of hanging out, you know. Yeah. I think there's a missed opportunity with with, uh, with Lionel and uh, not, not having a chance to meet, to meet Tony the Tiger. There could have been a crossover, <laughs> right? Oh, I met him. No big deal. <laughs> no, I'm just saying he's a giant tiger. It just feels like there's like a should have been a crossover. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's fantastic. Did, did you ever did you ever go in, and just out of curiosity go and try some of the cereals? Uh, try Ch Con Chocolate and see if you actually liked it? I well, of course I tasted it. Yeah. The thing with me is I, I, I'm a cereal guy. I love cereal, but I, I don't and I love chocolate. I, oh. I love but, but I didn't like, I don't like chocolate for breakfast. I don't like, you know, to get, wake up and eat chocolate and milk. Yeah. Um, I could now after I'm no longer doing the voice. But um, yeah, no, I, I never was big into that. I think even when I was a kid, I was more into uh, like, like Frosted Flakes and things sure. like that. And, and Cheerios, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Not, I mean, now it's ridiculous. Like the amount of things that have gone chocolate for breakfast, it's kind of, I mean, Cheerios even went chocolate. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be a fly in the wall of those companies. Just like, you know what we haven't done yet? We haven't made our cereal <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so did, did, uh, did the folks who were producing the, the latest incarnation, the, the Roar show, have they asked you to come and, and join up? I, I'm on it. I play Jaga. Believe it or not, on the I think I'm on three episodes. Oh, three I, I haven't seen Roar yet, so I, I I'm a little uh, innocent to that series. But that, that's I, I cool. think. Huh? I said that's what? great. It's like a passing of the torch. You became Jaga. Yeah. I mean, that's amazing. It was like having me play uh, Claudius on the 2011. Uh, yeah, Lino's I think it was more or less uh, an homage to the original, the original series and the, and the fans of the original series. Did they um, have you record that by yourself, or did, did you get to record this new show uh, with with a, with a bunch of folks? 
all by myself. And you know, even back in 2011, uh, when when they brought me out, the Warner Brothers brought me out to uh, Burbank, <clears throat> the Warner Brothers Ranch, to do uh, I, again. I did three or four episodes uh, of the 2011 one as Claudius, and um, I couldn't wait to. I, I got to the studio early, and it was a big studio, just like the one we using in New York. And there, there were six microphones all set up, copy stands in a semicircle, just the way we used to do it uh, in New York all the time. So I'm. St- and, but nobody else has showed up yet. So I'm standing around kind of kibitzing with the engineer when all of a sudden the director said, Larry, we really should get started. And I said, oh, sure. Uh, but nobody else is here. And she said, oh, you're, it's just you today. I said, well, here we go. And that's where that all began, I think. For me, at least, that was the first time I had en- encountered that, working alone in the studio. How, how different, yeah. Uh, and I'm sure you've worked with a, quite a good number of vocal directors, right? Oh yeah. Thousands. Yeah. So what, I mean, after obviously you're coming at it from the actor side of things, uh, what would you say is, uh, something that you look forward to in a good vocal director? Somebody who can tell me exactly what he wants. And, uh, some directors know exactly what they want and they know how to tell you exactly what they want. Some other directors will just let you start and then just kind of go, mm, no, not quite that. Uh, try it. So you try it this way, you try it that way. But a really good director knows what he, what he wants to hear and he knows when he's heard it or she. I should, shoot. Yeah. Um, Did you, does that mean, um, does that look like somebody saying, now do it more like this? Or do you think they, they can do that without actually, without <clears throat> doing the line themselves? You never, a good director never gives, actors line readings. In other words, they never say, do it like this. <clears throat> I think you should do it. They just suggest, because actors don't like that. You know, Right. Tell me exactly. Tell me what you want. You want it angrier? Do you want it more frightened? Do you want, do you want me to say it as though I'm, I'm being facetious? You know, but don't tell me exactly how to say it. Did you ever work with Andrea Romano? Oh yes. That's who I worked with. Uh, uh, on the 2011. Um, oh, okay. Okay. I guess she, she, she's the best. She's the she best. I think, I think she's running the entire animation department at Warner Brothers now. I believe. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I knew she was getting more involved, but I didn't know she was doing all that. That's that's pretty. I mean, she's a, a, a legend. She was, yeah, she was wonderful, and and so she's brilliant and and fun to work with too. You What's know? the yeah. I, 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 it's been my experience over the years that whether it's commercials or, or radio or you know, the animation series, that uh, the really the best directors, to me, are the ones who can also have fun. They're not all, I mean, they're all business, but sure. they allow a little bit of leeway to okay, Larry wants to have fun. Let Larry have fun for a little bit, and then we'll do it the right way, you know. Well, but sometimes the best performances can come out of lowering those walls. Yeah, sure. You never know. Yeah. Um, that's, that's really good. What, what's the shortest session you've ever been brought in for? <clears throat> Skittles. Oh, it's okay. only, only one new word. Every commercial, every, every Skittles commercial is something, the rainbow, taste the rainbow, <laughs> right. feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow, discover the rainbow, taste the rainbow, uh, <laughs> organize the rainbow. So I told yeah. them one day. About 10 years into it, I said, and I've been doing it about 20 years now, I said, you know what you, you should do is, 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 is book a studio for an entire day or two, and then I'll come in and we'll record every uh, verb in the English language. <laughs> and then we're done. You know? Wait, but then I quickly realized that would not be good for me because I just get paid for, for a couple of recording sessions. That's you know? very true. But when you, when you first saw that ad campaign, did it sort of make you scratch your head like, this is really weird, guys? <laughs> Yeah, it was just it just jumped out at you. It was nothing else like it. No, the only thing I can think of it similar to it is like the Axe body spray commercial, or the uh, no, I'm sorry, not the Axe. The um, the Old Spice commercials are kind of similar. I don't recall. They're 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 just kind of random. They have this very random feel to them. Oh, okay, just, yeah, I know what you mean. You don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, kind of unexpected. You're just like, oh, I, I don't know how that is Sometimes anything to. With the product, but, <laughs> but yeah. I'm not gonna. You're watching 
through it and you go, where are they going to go with it? Oh, my God, I never saw that coming, you know? Right. That's a good commercial. Is there, is there a character, uh, a type of character or whatever, something that you kind of always wished would would come up from your agent and it, it just hasn't come up yet, but you're like, man, I've been dying to play a, a role like this and I, I wish I could still do this. No, you know, I've been so lucky in this business. I've been in this business now for almost 60 years since I was 15 years old. And uh, I've been so lucky. I've done something in every area of the business. I've done record albums. I've done movies. I did uh, soap opera uh, years and years ago. Um Radio, of course. I did. I hosted a television television game show in New York for three years, Bowling for Dollars. So oh, I've, oh. I've worked in every, yeah, except Broadway. I, I've never done a Broadway show yet. But have um, you done and, like, and, like, theater stuff? I'm sorry. Have you done like a community community theater, anything like that? Have you done that sort of thing? No. no, I never. The only theater I've ever really done in my life is when I was in college. I did two. Uh, plays when I was at Western Illinois University, and I, I enjoyed them tremendously. But even then, I was leaving the theater and going to my radio show every night. So I've been in radio, you know, like I said, since I was 15. So my last two years of high school, I had to stop playing sports because I was on the air on the weekends. And um, but I didn't, I didn't mind because I, I love this radio so much. You know, what inspired uh, you? the radio was there was there a, a particular personality that you heard and you're just like man i gotta do what that that person's doing <clears throat> on radio yeah oh yeah there are always people growing up uh, i would hear a guy in chicago and i would start mimicking his style and, and and using his jokes on my on my show you know um oh i think i think no matter what you do especially in show business there's always there are always people that first of all inspired you to get into that profession and then there are those, those probably the same ones, who, who uh, made such a such an impact on you because you liked the way they did things. Um, in radio, I guess Wolfman Jack was one of my one sure. of my idols, and later became a good friend. And um, as far as cartoons go, I I wasn't around when uh, well, I was a kid <clears throat> when the old Looney Tunes and everything. You know, I was a kid when those were on the air, but. Sure. Uh, there's Casey so Kasem. many. Casey Kasem, counting down the top 100 songs, uh, 2005. I mean, I never, met, I never met Casey. Oh man, I mean, who would have thought that 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 voice would would go go on to do Shaggy? I mean, what a strange combination. Oh. Yeah, that's the great thing about the business. You never know what's going to happen, man. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Why? Well, I mean, it's it's really it's really great to to. Uh, I, I like seeing uh, the life be remembered and carried on. I like that they've included you in the subsequent series. I think that's really uh, nice and thoughtful. And and you know, like you said, as as different as things can become in different versions, uh, it's nice to have a through line. You know, and uh, like we have uh, Optimus Prime with, with the Transformers. <laughs> We've got you know uh, some consistency in, in the in the vocal performance there. It's nice to see that that you've been able to come back. Yes, it, it's wonderful. And, you know, uh, we were talking about the 2011 <clears throat> reincarnation. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Warner Brothers. Um, they flew me out to San Francisco for the Comic-Con there. And, and they, they showed the audience uh, the very first episode. Nobody had ever seen it before, you know. And the, there were like 2,000 people at this Comic-Con in this huge theater. And uh, they kept us backstage. And when I say us, I mean me and, and um, um, Will Friedel, who played Lionel in, in that one. Uh, anyway, we were backstage, and, and they were watching. You could hear it was kind of a muffled thing, but we could hear the, the, uh, the show. You know, we could hear the laughing. We could, laughter, and we could hear the cheering and everything. But at one particular point, this enormous roar came from that theater. And somebody opened the door and it just an enormous roar. And somebody from Warner Brothers came over to me and said, they just heard you say Thundercats Ho for the first time. And they went nuts. And it, uh, it brought a little tear to my eye. It was 
you know, sure. it's very nice. Well, you know, I, I like that you that you mentioned that because it's not there's a lot of actors and there's a lot of cartoons, there's a lot of shows that that come and go. And uh, it's not every time that uh, a show can have that lasting of an impact. So I'm sure that's very rewarding for you. It is. It's very rewarding. I'm I'm very um, possessive about the uh, the legacy of Thundercats. I've been asked to do a lot of things that I turned down because I didn't like. They were kind of I don't to me they were kind of mocking the show or or whatever. I just didn't feel right because I've always I tell you what over the years and especially since the advent of the computers, uh, the internet and email. But even before that, I would get letters from people uh, who would tell me in varying degrees of detail about their unfortunate childhoods. And you can imagine what I'm talking about. Some yeah. were abused and some were terribly poor, whatever. And so many of them told me that they would say things like, when I went into my, in my room for that 30 minutes watching Thundercats, all that went away. And, and they thank me for that, for, you know, and that means so much to me. And that, that's why I, I never, I'm very careful about what I do. Uh, if we have the time, I'll tell you, um, I first got a call from my agent <clears throat> a few years ago, and he said that um, they wanted me to do a, do a Lionel bit on Family Guy. And I said, oh, you know, I don't think so. I've seen that show and it's brilliant. It's, Seth MacFarlane's a genius. And they said, well, he called, he, he called and asked for you. And I said, I just don't think so because I, I love that show. But, you know, our show back in the 80s was, you know, you'd never say the things they say. I'm afraid that the fans are going to be offended by that. Well, my, my son, we were talking on the phone. And he came over and said, Dad, first of all, your fans are not eight years old anymore. <laughs> they're in their 30s. And they're going to love this stuff. He said, secondly... Family Guy is the show everybody wants to be on. I mean, big stars, you know, tell their agents, get me on Family Guy. It's like The Simpsons, you know. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll send me a script, and if I don't think it's too offensive, uh, then maybe I'll, I'll do it. Well, they sent me the script, and I said, absolutely not. I'm <laughs> and once again, my son talked me into doing it, Tanner. Uh and if you are you familiar with with the, the bit on a Family Guy, uh, uh, I I think I remember seeing it once, but I I haven't seen it in recent times. Well, they they did two or three of them, but Seth MacFarlane uh, did the Lionel voice on most of them, but for this one he wanted me on it. So <clears throat> it's a very short thing. Uh, they're in San Francisco. Um, what's the father's name? Griffin. Uh, Peter. 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 Peter Griffin. He and I think Quagmire are. In San, for some reason, in San Francisco, and they're driving along, looking around, and and um, Peter says, uh, "Boy, I bet you see a lot of strange couples living in there." And they, they shoot to the interior of an apartment where Lionel is standing, standing there, and uh, Chitara comes by and says, uh, "What you doing, Lionel?" He says, uh, "Oh, I don't know. I just well, I got a feeling Mumra's up to something, and I, I don't know what it is." I know it can't be good, and I've got to, I've got to get. And she goes, "I'm going to the can." So she goes in the ladies' room, in the bathroom in the apartment. Lionel looks around. And he takes the sword of omens and says, "Give me sight beyond sight." <laughs> Snarf comes by and says, "What are you doing, Lionel?" And Lionel says, "Oh, nothing. I just uh, you want to get stoned." <laughs> I, I can I can look I can respect your wanting to preserve the memory of the show. I'm I'm personally I'm very uh old, I don't know I don't want to say, I don't want to call that old school, but I'm very uh, protective of, of things like that as well. So I I, gen, I I appreciate that. But I also think it's very big of you to go and do some satire as well. Oh, and sure. <laughs> you know that's, that's pretty great. Um uh so We've we've just about run out of time. I, I I wanted to first say thank you for being here. Um, I, I hope that you know you continue to do Count Chocula and and whatever else Thundercats can can bring to us. There's you know there's there were rumors for a while of them making a a, a 3D animated movie. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, 
Mm -hmm. but if it does, it would be great if they brought you back for that. Is there anything uh, currently that you're working on that we can look forward to seeing you do? Uh, I'm still doing Skittles and and uh, the occasional commercial radio commercial for this or that. You know, that's the bread and butter part of the business. Bread and butter. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of um, <clears throat> video games. The most recent one, and what I'm currently working on, is called Red Dead Redemption Two. No, you yeah. are a game or not? I play sure. a character, uh, J.B. Cripps. He's a cantankerous old mule skinner, you know, uh, and I enjoy that. I'm having fun with that. That's great. What what, what microphone are you recording on? Out of curiosity, uh, here or the the? Uh, oh, what, when you, when you do your radio spots now, and you do, you're going from home, I, I assume you're recording from home now, right? Only auditions. Only auditions. Oh. I'm not in a, see I don't have a studio I'm in I'm in uh, my bedroom actually oh. I, have a, I have a very good microphone and uh, and I have oh, some baffling that so that's that's good to send uh, so I don't have to go to Manhattan just to do an, do an audition for a radio spot you know I can send that yeah. to my agent. but when it comes oh. time to recording the actual uh, commercial I have to go in the city oh, okay that looks like you got a yeti right is that a yeti yeah, a yeti yeah, yeah. yeti yeti, I, yeti. I also have a Yeti that I record right. on. Show me your Yeti, I'll show you mine. Oh, let me grab my Yeti. It's hold on. I'm not using it right this minute, but I use it when I'm doing my podcast. Yeah, and good. I like this. I've had this one for a long time. This is my Yeti. Yeah, beautiful. All my right. little, my little foam protective <laughs> box in there. Well, not, uh, I yeah. can't use, I can't use those um, folder things. I'm, I'm Catholic. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. That was that was good. That's a good note to, to wrap things up on. Thank you, Larry. Good it's been you. great having you here. I really genuinely appreciate it, and uh, you're you're uh, you're a classic. So thank you for being who you are. I enjoy it, Phil. Thank you so much, and thank you everybody for watching. Yeah, we got some. I'll I'll, I'll throw it in there real quick. We got Stevie in the room, and she's saying one of my favorite cartoons growing up. Uh, Someone named Christian Fuentes says, "How funny! I'm watching Thundercats as well right now." Uh, oh, you mean then, other people are watching this now? I thought it was oh, just you and I. Told. No, people are watching right now, Larry. I know. That. And then, I just uh, think. someone named someone named uh, Erica just said, "Rim shot." <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh, "Hi from Audrey and Erica." And uh, someone named Becky MV says, "Hi." Um, Hi. And Stevie, once again, Stevie Sir jumped in, and, and when you were talking about when you mentioned uh, the annual playing of Wizard of Oz, she mentioned they did Sound of Music once a year too. That's right. Yeah, yeah. She must be old too. I'm sorry, Stevie. I'm just I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I, I was gonna, I was gonna. When you brought that up, I was gonna say they also did that with the Ten Commandments. And uh, for a while on Thanksgiving, they would play Jurassic Park. I don't know how they figured that one went together, but it did. I remember King Kong every Thanksgiving day figured that one out. I don't know where that came from, but back in Illinois, where I'm from, every, every Thanksgiving day, they played King Kong. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, uh, well, thank you again, and, and, uh, and we'll see you in the, in the cartoons. Okay. See you in the funny papers. Thanks, yeah. Phil. I enjoyed it. Thank you, Larry. Me too. All righty. That is the end of another episode of Stay Tuned Live. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, what I'd like to uh, wrap up the show with now is uh, just, first of all, a, a big thank you once again to Larry Kenny uh, for taking the, his time to discuss with us, you know, such a uh, impactful series on both animation and on a lot of people's uh, childhoods and uh, a lot of future generations as well. Uh, thank you so much to all of my stay tuned patrons, guys. Your your support every month uh, it, it's a wonderful thing. It really does give me a, a boost of, of confidence, a pat on the back, and it also helps me keep the lights on. So thank you so much for doing that each and every month. Um, and as you know, I'm an independent creator, so that is uh, very important to me. So thank you. And if you enjoy these free weekly shows, please visit Patreon.com forward slash Filmaki. Uh, you can learn more about the various reward tiers and you can become a patron today. And while you're at it, go ahead and check out my original comic books at Filmaki.com. Be sure to say hi to me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, you can find me under my own name or under Retail Sunshine 
and that is the name of the characters that you see right behind me. If you want to interact with like-minded individuals, animation fans just like yourself, go ahead and join the amazing Stay Tuned community right here on Facebook for free daily news of all things animated. You can get involved right now at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash stay tuners. I've been Phil Maki. You've been a wonderful audience. And until next week, keep those eyeballs peeled, those ears open, and be sure to stay tuned. (laughs) 